With some of the fun stuff already implemented, we can now get to working on the visuals so we can start bringing in the assets, specifically the textures, to start changing up the player so that we can actually see a little bit more in scale how it's going to look and how it's going to be represented in game. Now for this, I'll be using a free asset pack that you can get from itch.io. Uh, it's called Pixel Adventure. There's also a Pixel Adventure 2. It's made by Pixel Frog, and it is completely free to download. Of course, if you enjoy the package and you wanted to support their work, then I'm sure they'd more than appreciate uh, some small or larger donations if you're able to do that when you're downloading them. Now, I'll also provide some downloads which you can get from below, which have all of these assets or some of the assets, the ones that we'll be using specifically for these videos, which have been kind of repurposed and altered based on the scaling and things. And I'll explain that in just a moment, why I've made those changes. But if you wanted to download these, they do come in a very small size, which is part of what I would class as a little bit of the problem when working in an engine like Unreal. But again, hopefully you understand the process of downloading something from itch. If you wanted to get the entire pack as it comes here otherwise look below to get the download for the project files to follow along with the videos in the same exact way so what i'll be providing are these we're going to get the bat the hearts uh, two forms of player although we'll only be setting up the frog the spring and the level pieces now these i have set up in a particular way so that i can show certain different approaches to extracting these, animating them and getting them set up in a project. And also these have been resized. So this is the way that you'll find things are downloaded if you get it from the itch webpage. So these are the ones which haven't been touched. We can see that they are 32 by 32 pixels. If we look at the jump animation or the double jump animation, we can see they're a little bit small. And if we start trying to increase this, then we're going to get that blurry effect. Now I've increased the size of the assets that I'll be using that I recommend following along with in a way that doesn't do this which is basically running it through a 2D package like Photoshop or Krita. I've chosen to increase the scale by 400% and making sure that we set the algorithm to nearest neighbor, which means you'll get the scale increase based on the pixel percentage and you don't get any of that kind of smoothing around the edges. So you still get a pixel perfect kind of image. Now, the reason for this, a couple of things I wanted to mention. First of all, this isn't a very optimized way to bring things into an engine like Unreal because Unreal will try to compress things. It will compress the image sizes for performance later only if you provide it in a power of two. So that's something like this where I've put them all together in one big tile sheet. You can see it's 1024 by 1024 in dimension, which is the power of two. So 512 by 512, 256 by 256 and so on. And because of that, it's able to take these assets that I've done that with and it will try to compress them if they're in that power of two. So it probably won't do it with these, but uh, like I said, this is more for demonstration. I wanted to show a few different ways in case you do get, get given assets like this. It's not the end of the world. It's not going to break your project and it will be useful to know how to extract things in this way as well. So that's the first thing I've changed is where possible, I've made them a power of two sprite sheet. Now, the other thing is obviously the size and the reason I've chosen to go for the bigger size. So rather than getting the 32 pixel by 32 pixel, we're working more with 128 by 128 per grid space, so per image. And the reason being is that this will avoid us needing to override some of the project defaults, such as the AI navigation search volume. If you consider that nowadays we're working with things like 4K resolutions, you'll have images which each individual image could be 512 or 1024, or even 2048 by itself to get those high res images. So working with something which is only 128 pixels per image is still going to be relatively small, definitely not going to be game breaking. We can see this entire sprite sheet is only 31 kilobytes in size. And this means it's going to be much easier to work with. We won't need to change the world sizes. We can still work with a centimeter by centimeter world size. We won't need to override any of the AI systems as well. So I think in this case, working with a slightly bigger image set is going to make things a lot more convenient. So as I've mentioned, if you can, I would definitely recommend following along with the assets that I provide here. Download these. Once you have these extracted, go back into the engine and we'll look at getting some of these textures into the engine and working. So we can do this a number of ways. The thing that we're going to be importing is a texture. So we're going to go to the texture folder. You could navigate to where you found or stored them on your system. Go to import game assets textures, which is going to be the location. And you just find them and select them all and choose open and that will bring them in. Another way is to just have the window open here. We can drag select all of these and just drop them into our project. So they're looking a little bit off at the moment, but that's fine. We'll be fixing this in just a second. Um, and what we want to do, in fact, first of all, if we open one of these, we can have a look at some of the settings. So for the most part, these look okay. Maybe a little bit fuzzy around the edges. It's hard to tell. 
but we can do something to improve this in a moment. So we've got the alpha that we already need here. So the first thing is that this is a texture, which means we can't drag it into the world. We can't see this in the world at the moment. We need something called a sprite to be able to do that. So I'm going to go back to the main textures folder. And what I want to do is we can grab all of these. And basically we want to change the details here uh, and get it to automatically update this to better suit our project. And we can do that by selecting all of these. So shift and select, right click on our assets and go to sprite actions and apply paper 2D texture settings. Now what that will do, you can see all of the alpha has been accounted for. It's, it's gotten rid of that black background. And just here, we can see what's changed is that, that used to be the default, the XT1, and it's decided that user interface would be clear. And I think that does look a little bit sharper. And then down here, the important thing is it's changed this to be 2D pixels. And this works perfectly fine because we're not going for that smooth hand painted or hand textured kind of look. The perfect pixel image is pretty much what we want here. And again, I think that started off as world by default. So doing that on all of our assets saves us a lot of time from setting this up manually. Now, the next thing we want to do is turn these into sprites so that we can actually start extracting things from them. Before we jump into that, I just wanted to give you a quick example of what I meant by the scaling. So if I start with the hearts, uh, you don't need to follow along here. Uh, we're going to do this in a particular way in a moment, but I'm just going to extract the sprites, let it choose whichever option it wants. We're going to go more into the options in a moment. And it's the sprites, not the textures, as I mentioned, that we can drag into the world. So you can see it's actually roughly the same size as this player start. If we press play, it's not too far away from the size of our cube. So this, like I've said, is already kind of lining up with the centimeter based world scaling options. So I'm just going to get rid of those for now. And in a similar way, I'm going to get rid of the Ninja Frog assets. We're not going to need the smaller versions, the ones which haven't come with the updates already included. Uh, we're just going to keep for now our textures here. Now at the moment, I'm just going to get rid of the hearts. We'll probably do the same process in just a moment, but I wanted to go through a little bit more detail on how we can extract these into our game. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.